logic in all parts of geometry. And logic involves both conditional statements and also the converse. Well, along with the converse, there are two additional statements that can be formed. And to understand these two, you first need to understand what it means to negate a statement. And it's easy. Check it out. Here's statement A. It's a triangle. And here's the negation of A. And likewise for statement B. That's all there is to it. To form the negation, you just state the opposite. So here we go with the two new statements. First, we have what's called the inverse. The inverse would be this. If not A, then not B. Notice that the hypothesis and conclusion stay in the same place. But they both get negated. Here's an example. Let's form the inverse by negating both the hypothesis and conclusion. Here's another one. Let's form the inverse of this one. And if you're thinking that that inverse is not always true, you might be on to something. So now that we've done the converse and the inverse, here's the final new statement. It's called the contrapositive. And you form the contrapositive like this. It's kind of like doing both things. Switching the hypothesis and conclusion and negating each one. Contrapositive. Switch them and negate each part. Let's take a statement and form its contrapositive. First, we switch the hypothesis and conclusion. Then we negate each part. Here's one more. First, we switch the hypothesis and conclusion. Then we negate each part. Great! I think you've got it. Okay, we're going to do a little matching exercise here. Let's summarize everything by drawing three more arrows to match each term on the left, with this description on the right. Ready? Here we go! So now let's take the arrows away and move them into their correct positions. There you go. Now we've got everything as it should be. See you next time.